Hello, good morning, Victory Davao. Good morning and Happy New Year to all of us. Happy New Year. Ma, uh, ano ba sa Tagalog ang Happy New Year? Happy New Year. Happy New Year. All right. By the way, my name is uh, Chito. I'm one of the pastors here in Victory Davao. And I would like to personally welcome all of us here in our 10 a.m. service. Who among you here, you are happy to be here? Come on. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for this beautiful service that we are starting First Sunday of 2024. I hope that you are filled with so much excitement. Woohoo! Come on. Yan, mga 50% na yung excited ngayon. Sige lang, okay lang. By the way, uh, as I start our uh, preaching today, I'd like to welcome all of us here. Again, welcome to Victory Davao. And uh, if it's your first time here, we would like to welcome you as well. Can I see a raise of hands? Sino sa inyo, it's your first time to join our services here? First. Yun, can we give God praise? Welcome, welcome to Victory. We hope um, that this is not your last time to be here, but please feel free to reach out to people around you. Mababait yung mga kasama natin dito. The, the, the people around you are good looking and also they're also good. Tama ba, church? Yes? Yes, all right. Um, I, you know, I'm just so excited to, to preach today. By the way, Pastor Jopet is uh, not here right now. Next week, he will be with us. Uh, and I'm here to, uh, I'm here privileged to share God's word to all of us here. Uh, but as I start my preaching today, just two announcements for us. First, tomorrow is our prayer and fasting week, okay? That's the start of our five-day prayer and fasting. So we would like to invite all of you, whether you're here right now or you're, you're online, Please join us in our prayer meetings at 7 p.m. starting tomorrow, okay? So we will gather here, the same area that we are here right now. Let's gather here to pray together and to fast together. This is an annual thing that we do as part of our church. We pray together, we fast together, and we depend on God in His faithfulness. Amen. And so uh, our series for our uh, prayer and fasting is entitled Set Apart. And in fact, next week, this will be the start of a new preaching series also entitled Set Apart. But for this week, I hope that we can join our prayer meetings, okay? Kindly tell your seatmate, join tomorrow, okay? Join tomorrow and for the rest of the week, no, for our uh, prayer and fasting prayer meetings. Now, second announcement for us, who among you here, you are married? Ayan, parang hindi happy yung mga married, no? Okay. How long you're happily married here in this place, all right? Please mark this date, February 10. Okay, everybody say February 10. We are going to have a marriage boosters, okay? We want for all of us, all married people here in this place, we want to grow in our marriage. We want you to have the best marriage that you can ever experience in your life. And for us to be able to do that, we want to help you, okay? So, February 10, we're going to have our marriage boosters. Yeah, save the date lang muna. Um, we're going to have special speakers for this. So please be here. Uh, we will announce the registration in the coming days. Uh, but I hope that you can mark the dates for, especially for the married individuals here in our church. All right. So we are going to proceed with our series. How among you here, you were with us during the New Year's Eve service last week, okay, December 31. We started uh, a series entitled Fullness, okay? And Pastor Neil was here with us, and he shared with us what, what it means to have this fullness in Christ. And so I want to ask you this question as we start this preaching. What does fullness mean to you? Ano yung picture ng fullness for you? What, how do you picture fullness in your life? Now look at your seatmate. Does your seatmate feel full? Okay, fullness. Okay, I'm not just talking about food. Huh? I mean, I mean, yes, we are full probably with food, especially in the Christmas season. Okay, ang daming parties. We've been to a lot of gatherings, a lot of food. Noche buena, media noche, uh, five meals a day. Praise God, yung mga ganong klase, no? And we feel full. Probably fullness for you means there's a lot of food in your refrigerator right now, okay? Uh, sa lahat ng mga sinaron mo nung Christmas at New Year, probably. Probably your, your, your ref, there's no more space for additional food. That's fullness for you, okay? 
Or probably at the start of the year, you find that your GCash or Maya is to the maximum. Di na pwedeng pasuka ng pera. It's so full. Come on. Maybe your wallets right now are so full. Amen. Konti lang yung nag-amen. Sige lang. It could be that at the start of the year, because you've been through a lot of reunions, family gatherings, you're starting the year full of love, di ba? Full of relationships. Probably you've, you've gone through the Christmas break and now you're full of rest and you're ready to go to work. Amen? Konti lang din. Sige. Or it could be that fullness for you at the start of 2024, your schedule is already full for 2024. Hello? If you're a student, you're a working professional, or if you are working at home, you are a full-time parent in the house, your schedule for 2024 is already full. Or it could be that at the start of 2024, you're already full of problems. That's a reality. So how does fullness look like in your life today? Last week, Pastor Neil shared this verse for us. This is Ephesians chapter 3, verse 19. Can we all open our Bibles to that verse, Ephesians chapter 3? If you have your Bibles or Bible apps, let's open Ephesians chapter 3. By the way, as we start the year, who among you, your, your one wish, your one prayer for 2024 is you, that you will get to read the Word of God more in 2024, right? Probably for many of us, yun yung New Year's resolution natin, that at the start and throughout 2024, we will be reading the Word of God. So why don't we start that today, okay? If you have your Bibles, open Ephesians chapter 3, verse 19. And what does it say in verse 19? It says, To know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. How among you here, you want to be filled with all of the fullness of God? Probably you want that, pero sometimes we may not understand what this means. What does it mean to be filled with all the fullness of God? And this might not make sense to some people because when you look at this particular statement, to be filled with all the fullness of God, it doesn't make sense because one, in our limited capacity, we cannot, we cannot be filled with all the fullness of God. Do you, do you see this? That God is so great, God is so magnificent, God is so glorious and so big that He cannot be contained in our limited capacity. Man's limitations cannot be filled with all the fullness of God. Are you here? Or it could be that you know, even if God can easily fill us up. I mean, God is so great that He can easily fill our lives up. But could it be that even if God can easily fill us up, how is it that we still feel empty sometimes? Why does it that even as a follower of Christ, we still feel something is lacking in our lives today? That even if God can fill us up to all His fullness, we still Feel this emptiness in our hearts and in our minds. And so I hope, church, that as we study the, the Word of God today, and we're going to read again Ephesians chapter 3, I hope that we can find the answer to this question. How, do we get, how, do we are, how are we filled with this fullness of God in our lives? And so while you're opening your Bibles, can we all stand up? We're still going to read Ephesians chapter 3. And we're going to read uh, two verses only. Verses 20 and verse 21. Okay, so just right after the verses that we read a while ago. Let me read verse 20 and verse 21. It says, Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or think, according to the power at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever Amen. Lord God, we pray that as we study your word today, as we hear the preaching of your word, Lord, open our hearts, open our minds to your message today. And Lord, let it be that your word will always be our guide, Lord, especially for this year. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. 
Now, as you're sitting down, okay, kindly ask your seatmate, ano yung one prayer request niya for this 2024? Okay? Ask your seatmate, what is that person's one major prayer request this 2024? Okay? Ask that person. If you're online, kindly chat na lang, comment. What is your one prayer request this 2024? All right? How long you hear your seatmate has a prayer request about relationships? Wala, walang relationships. Okay. Meron doon, doon. Okay. How about yung, yung katabi mo, your seatmate, that person's prayer request is about finances or or growth in finances. Yun, meron dito, okay? How about in terms of knowing God more this year? Amen. Okay, so we have a lot of prayer requests. Even in this room, isa-isa tayo. We, we have different prayer requests. And maybe some of these prayer requests are impossible, right? But let me get this one truth out right now, okay? Are you ready for this truth? The truth is, church, God is able. Amen? Do you believe that? God is able. Whatever your prayer request is, whatever that faith goal is, no matter how impossible that is, please believe that God is able. God is, we're talking about the power of God here. We're talking about the omnipotence, the all power of God, the ability, the power of God to do great and supernatural things in our lives. Even though we feel like it's impossible, God can do supernatural things in our lives. This is the same God who created the heavens and the earth with His own words. This is our God who parted the Red Sea. Impossible, but He still did that. This is our God who died and rose from the grave so that we can experience salvation, forgiveness of our sins. God is able, church. And what, we, what this means for us is He's gonna be the same yesterday, today, forever. He's gonna be able. He is powerful. Amen? Do you believe that? Can you convince your seatmate, God is able? God is able. Make no mistake about that truth. God is able. But, church, the question is, do you really believe this statement? That's the question. I mean, this is truth. God is powerful. God is able. But when you ask yourself, do you really believe in this statement? When you look at that one prayer request that seems so impossible, when you look at a prayer that you've been praying for many years already and still that answer hasn't come, even if your faith goal is so impossible, it's so improbable, do you believe this statement? Looking at our situation, how difficult it is, how impossible it seems to be, can you still say that He is able? You know what I realized, church? Two of the biggest obstacles to believing this statement that God is able, the biggest obstacles to believing God's ability are two things, doubt and worry. When we say doubt, it's, it's, if you look at the original term of doubt, it's being double-minded, okay? Nagdududa, meaning it's either you believe or not. Sometimes you believe, sometimes you don't. And it's probably because you don't have enough evidence that God is powerful in your life. Maybe there is that, that you've experienced something in your life and there is not enough conviction for you to say that God is powerful. And that's, that's why you're doubting. Meanwhile, worry means that you don't have enough assurance that God is faithful. I mean, yes, you believe that God is able, you believe that God is powerful, but it's not as solid as you think it is. Instead of siguro parang kahoy, no? instead of ano ba, nara or lawaan, siguro plywood lang yung belief mo about God is able. And so, yes, you could doubt. Yes, you could worry. 
And maybe sometimes you believe that your situation is more important. Your situation is bigger than God. Hello? But church, we do not believe in God by intellect. Hello? We do not believe in God just by emotions, but we believe in God by faith. Amen? We don't believe in God just because we understand God. I mean, yes, to a certain degree, we understand God. And to a certain degree, we feel the presence of God, but it's not the main reason why we believe in God. We believe that God is able because it's all by faith. Amen? That's why Scripture says, now faith is the assurance of things hoped for. Faith is the conviction of things not seen. Faith is assurance. Faith is conviction. Faith is evidence that even if you don't see these things, you still believe in God. Even if at this moment in your life, you don't see the answers to your prayers, but still you believe in God by faith. That is faith, church. And God desires for us to have this kind of faith. A faith that is assured in Him. A faith that is convicted and convinced that indeed God is powerful. That's the kind of faith that God desires for us. The fullness of assurance. The fullness of conviction in Him. And you know what? The only way to be filled with this fullness, it's only by faith, church. I mean, if you look at our lives today, we are limited, no? Look at your seatmate. Mukha bang limited? Or mukhang perfect? Okay, mukhang perfect, ano? I mean, no one is perfect here in, in our church or wherever, no? It's because we are limited. Our, our minds are limited. Our wisdom is limited. Our knowledge of God is limited. I mean, we are filled with limitations. Our limitations, it can never fully understand God. Do you agree? I mean, God is so great. God is so glorious. Yes, we can understand a fraction or a portion of who God is, but we can never understand the entirety of God. We cannot fully comprehend. That's why we may find it difficult. Paano nga ba yun? To be filled with all the fullness of God? I mean, that seems impossible. In fact, kahit ka sa, sa mundo, even if you look at the things of this earth, you cannot even understand the fullness of things here on this earth. Let me give you an example. Here's a picture of our planet Earth, okay? Unless yung seatmate mo hindi taga rito, okay? So, you know, if you look at our planet, did you know that only 42% of the Earth has been discovered? Probably most of the land, because land is easy to go to, but we're talking about the waters, the seas, the oceans. In fact, some scientists say that around 80% of the oceans, of the waters, have not been discovered yet. Okay? Probably because of the, how deep it is, how wide the oceans are, how inaccessible it is. I mean, only a portion of the earth has been discovered. That's only earth. Now, let's look at the universe now. If you look at the universe, scientists say that only 5% has been discovered. Of the whole universe, only 5% has been discovered. And some say that the universe is still growing and expanding. I mean, only a fraction of it is still being discovered. Not only that, how you here, you're a husband. Sino husbands dito? Husband? You know, husbands, you can never comprehend your wives. Amen? No matter how you try to understand your wife, your women, siyempre yung women din, you can never understand your husbands, no? I mean, we're talking about things of this world. We cannot understand the fullness of things on this earth. How much more the fullness of God? Are you here? I mean, it's... It's not easy for us to be able to grasp, to understand, to comprehend the fullness of God who created all of these things. That's why if we go back to the verse, it says in verse 20, Now to Him, to God who is able to do far more abundantly that we can ask or think. What this verse is telling us is that yes, we will never fully comprehend God, 
Yes, in our limited mindsets, we will make plans for 2024, but we can never fully grasp the entirety of God's plan. Yes, you're, you, you, you may think that your plan is so good, it's so great, but who among you agree that God's plan is always greater? Amen? No matter how man comes up with his plans and purposes, it's still the God's purpose that will prevail. Because just like what Daniel said a while ago, no, God's ways, God's thoughts are always higher than our thoughts. We will never get to that level to be equal with God. We may never 100% grasp the entirety, the fullness of God. But here's where we see the grace of God because in your limited mindset, in our limited wisdom, kung ito lang yung hinihingi mong kay God, if this is the only thing that you're asking, the verses now to Him who can give us far more abundantly that we can ask or think. If you think that this prayer request is already good for you, guess what the plans of God are for you. They're so much greater. They're much better. They're much more beautiful than what we can ask, think, or imagine. Do you agree with that? God's plans will always be more beautiful. Probably ngayon, when you look at God's plans, it seems so difficult. If you've been a follower of Christ for many years, and you've been persevering in your faith, you don't see... You, you continue to see suffering and trials and challenges in your life, even entering 2024, be assured that God's plans is still as more beautiful as what we can imagine. Now, verse 20, going on to verse 20, it says, according to the power at work within us. According to the power at work within us. If you're a follower of Christ, and let me ask you here, quick survey, who among you here, you are a follower of Christ? Amen. With confidence, who among you, you're a follower of Christ? Amen. All right. If you are a follower of Christ, I hope you know that there is power working within you. And we're talking about the power of the Holy Spirit who is in us. All right. Now, if it is hard to understand that God is powerful, it could also be difficult to understand that there is the power of God inside of us. If we don't believe in the first place that God is powerful, how can we believe this statement that God's power is working within us? I hope, church, that as we go through this year, we will always be reminded that the power of the Holy Spirit is in every believer. Amen? It's in every believer. Now, talking about power, no? everybody say power. I want to show you this verse. This is probably a popular verse for uh, sports fans, probably. Or um, probably this is your life verse, okay? Philippians chapter 4, verse 13. Do you know this verse, right? Can we read that all together? who strengthens me. Now, if you look at the word strengthen there, we're not just talking about physical strength, okay? Because sometimes we use this verse in terms of physical strength, and that's partly true. But if you look at the original meaning of that word strengthen, it's the Greek word endunamoo, and it means to empower, okay? Tell your seatmate, empower. Meaning to put power in a person. And so when we say that I can do all things through Him who empowers me, we're not just talking about physical, tangible strength, but it's the power of God in us. It's the power of God in us to do all things. Right? Everybody say all things. When we say, ano ba ibig sabihin ng all things? Okay? All things. When we say all things, it's all things. All things regardless of your situation. We're talking about whatever your situation or state is today, you can say this statement. I can do all things 
through Him who empowers, who strengthens me. And to be able to appreciate this verse more, let's go back to the verses before this. Now, this is verse 13. Let's go to verse 11 and verse 12. What do those verses tell us? It says there, I have learned in whatever situation I am to be content. I know how to be brought low and I know how to abound. In any and every circumstance, I have learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger, abundance and need. I can do all things through Him who strengthens me. It's talking, yes, it could be talking about strength in the physical state. It could be talking about doing impossible things. But if you look at the context of this whole passage, it's talking about contentment in all circumstances. And whatever you're going through and what you're going to face this year, I hope that you will be content. And because of that contentment, you will have this strength, this empowerment that you can do all things. What this means, church, is that the fullness that we're talking about, fullness is simply just being content in every circumstance. We're not talking about fullness na sobrang dami mong pera in your bank account. Yes, hopefully that will happen. Fullness is not, you know, eating six times a day, although yes, it could happen. But fullness means that even if you have only this little amount, you are content. That's fullness. Even if you only have two small copper coins, you are content in every circumstance. Even if you have difficulties in your job, in your school, even if, let's say, your grades mo medyo nasa red marks na papunta, and you're still persevering in your faith as a student, and you have joy and peace in studying, that's fullness for you. Fullness, church, is just being content in every circumstance. And that is the secret that Paul is, has been saying. Being content, being at peace, knowing that God is able to do great things in your life. But even if in your circumstance today you don't see those things, you are still content. You are still at peace. You are still in joy. And probably for 2023, you've experienced those kinds of things. No? Yung difficulties, challenges. Who among you, 2023 has not been an easy year for you? Okay. I'm sure for many of us, baka yung seatmate mo, that, that's, that person is not going to say anything. But that person may, may have had a difficult 2023. I want to show you this picture. This, this is a picture of some of the men that I have been journeying with no, um, in 2023. So I, probably you will see their faces. Pakalat kalat jan, pakalat kalat talaga. No? And, and, and many of these men are leaders. No? And by the end of 2023, uh, we were able to meet in a coffee shop and we were just talking about, Oy, kumusta yung 2023 nyo? If, if there's one word to describe your 2023, what would that be? Okay. So we were sharing our experiences. And you know, one common thing for these men, and even including me, if there's one word to describe 2023, maybe for some of you, 2023 was a year of breakthroughs, okay? But for these men, break down ang kanilang word of the year. I mean, breaking down in tears, breaking down in exhaustion. Siguro kung there's one word for them, yung word na, <gasps> yun, yun yung one word nila for 2023. I mean, no Christian is perfect. And you see these men, if you know their lives, they've gone through different seasons, including me in 2023. But by the end of 2023, yes, we've gone through those difficulties and challenges. But by the end of 2023, we could still say that God is faithful. We could still say that God is good. And I see in these men that there is contentment in their situation. And so facing 2024, I know that God will still be able. God will still be powerful. God will still be faithful in the lives of these men. And that's my prayer for all of us, 
that whatever we face, whatever situation or circumstance that is, we will be content in God. Amen? Now, here's another interesting truth about verse 20. We're trying to dissect, no, we're trying to digest these two verses. Now, looking at verse 20, it says there, according to the power at work within us. And if you look at that term, according to, baka sometimes it's just, you know, just a word in the Bible. But did you know that this term, according to, in the letter of Paul to the Ephesians, it appears more than 20 times in that letter. So I was thinking, if it appears many times, there must be a reason for this. There must be a deeper meaning to the word according to. And if you look at that original meaning, it says there, the Greek word is kata, and it means from higher to a lower plane. What does this mean? It means that the power of God the, the presence of God is on a higher plane. Are you here? And mankind is on a lower plane. Tayo. Alright? So God's power, God's faithfulness, God's glory is on a higher plane. And mankind, in our sinful nature, in our imperfections, we are on a lower plane. But because of God's love for us, He brought this higher plane towards the lower plane. Are you getting this? He brought His divine power, His divine love, and brought it to us, sinful, imperfect people here on this earth. And that's why it means according to, because it, it's God bringing His glory and majesty and love and power into lower beings like us. And that's not according to our merit. It's not according to our, if we deserve it or not. But it's because it's according to the power of God. It's according to His plans. In fact, if you look at Ephesians chapter 1, verse 7, it says, In Him we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of His grace. When you see redemption in your life, when you receive forgiveness in your life, it's because God has brought that to us. We did not earn our redemption, our forgiveness, but it's God from a higher plane bringing redemption, forgiveness, salvation to all of us here. And all of these things are according to the riches of His grace. Now, another definition of according to is against. Do you see that term, against? Because if, in reality, if we look at the holiness of God, if you look at how divine and good and faithful God is, and compare that with humans, human beings like us, there's, there's a disconnect. Do you agree? Hindi sila... It's, it goes against the holiness of God. It will go against our sinful nature. That is the reality. We don't deserve the glory of God. We don't deserve even the answers to our prayers. But this is where, church, we appreciate the beauty of God's grace, the riches of His grace. Because God gives all of these things to us who believe despite, despite our sinfulness. Despite our unrighteousness, God grants us redemption. God gives us forgiveness. We may not deserve all of these things, forgiveness, freedom, victory. The answers to things that we pray for, we don't deserve these things, church. But you know what? God gives these things to us anyway. And the reason why God gives these things to us, not because we deserve these things, but it's according to the riches of His grace. Amen. How many you appreciate the grace of God in your life? Can we give God praise for His grace? You know, I hope that we don't miss out on how beautiful the grace of God is. Kaya nga amazing grace yung tawag natin sa grace ni God because it is so amazing. We don't deserve the grace of God, but we are just privileged to receive 
that grace of God. And so in summary, going back to our word for today, now to Him who is able to do far more abundantly than all that we can ask or think according to the power at work within Him, verse 21 says, to Him be glory. In the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. Church, the central message of this preaching today is that we give glory to God. You know why? It's because He is God. We give glory to God for many reasons. But ultimately, we give glory to God because He is God. No other reason can compare the glory, the majesty of God. He is God. And because of that, we give glory to Him. And I hope, church, that you know as we enter 2024, I hope you know who God is in your life. Kilala nyo ba si God sa buhay nyo? Do you know who God is in your life? I hope that this year, this will be a revelation for you. Uh, a refreshing of your faith for you in God. Where you know that God is all-powerful, but you also know that God is all-loving and all-gracious. Amen? This is who God is in our lives, full of power, full of grace. And so church, as we go through 2024, how can we give glory to God? No? How can we give all of the glory and the praise to our God? We go back to verse 21 and we see the answers there. Number one, how do we give glory to God? Number one, in the church. You being part of the body of Christ. Yes, we're talking about Victory Davao, but we're also talking about the universal, the global body of Christ. I mean, hindi lang tayo yung Christiano dito. All, all of us here, if you're a Christian, you also have fellow brothers and sisters all over the world. And as a church of God, we give glory to Him. Amen? 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 31 says, So whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, what does it say? Do it all for the glory of God. Whatever it is, we're not just talking about Sundays going here, but we're talking about Monday through Saturday, from morning to evening, in your sleeping to your waking up, do everything for the glory of God. The way you take care of your children, the way you relate with your neighbors, your, your workmates, the way you take care of your bodies, your sleeping habits, your eating habits, everything you do, do it for the glory of God. The way you serve in church, if this year God is telling you to serve in church, to lead others to Christ, to make disciples in 2024, do it all for the glory of God. Amen? And secondly, church, we give glory to God in Christ Jesus. Jesus Christ is the perfect embodiment. The verse says there, Hebrews chapter 1, verse 3, the Son radiates God's own glory and expresses the very character of God and He sustains everything by the mighty power of His command. If you want to experience church, if you want to witness the glory of God in your life, turn to Jesus Christ. This could be the year for some of us here that maybe for the past few years you've been running away from God and now you're here and hearing this message, this is God telling you, my son, my daughter, come to me today, says the Lord. It could be that 2024 is finally the year that you surrender your life to Christ. It could be that this year, even this day, could be that day that God has given you to turn away from your sin and to turn to Christ. It could be this day, this week, this month, or this year, but we give glory to God in Christ Jesus. 
I hope church and my prayer for all of us is that all of us in this room and if you're online, that we will be filled with all the fullness of God. And it begins always, it always starts by turning to Jesus Christ, the author of our faith, the perfecter of our faith. We fix our eyes on Jesus that in every circumstance, we are full, we are content, we are complete because we are in Christ Jesus. And that's why we can give glory to our God. Let's all stand up, church. And as I call on the music team here, I want to pray also for a group of people here right now. As we're bowing down our heads, and let's close our eyes. It could be that the past few years have been difficult. And the past few years, you feel like there's something missing in your life. And today, as you're hearing the gospel, you understand that it's Jesus who's lacking in your life. That it could be today that God is calling you to His presence. And you want to declare today for the first time in your life that you're going to say, Lord Jesus, I want to surrender my life to you. That Lord Jesus, starting today, my life is yours. If you're that person here with all heads bowed and with all eyes closed, if you want to make that decision today to surrender your life to Christ and call Him as your Lord and Savior, raise your hand. I want to pray for you. Thank you for those hands. If you are here and you, you want to surrender finally after many years of running away from God and you want to say, Lord, here's my life. Use it according to your glory. If you want to make that decision today, raise your hand. I want to pray for you. In fact, for those of you who are raising your hands right now, I want to invite you and encourage you as a bold and confident step of, of faith today. If you're raising your hand today, can I invite you here in front, near the stage? Can you make that step of faith today to approach here so that we can all pray for you. If you're raising your hand, and Victory Le Group Leaders, if you're around these people, can we guide the men and women who are raising their hands right now? Can we go here in front on stage, Ito Malapit, so that we can pray for you? Go ahead. This is your bold and courageous step of faith that as you're starting 2024, you're declaring that God May, may my life be yours. Can we give God praise for these lives in front? Anyone else? Now, if you're here in front, ito sa mga harap, can you look at me here? Uh, I want you to follow this prayer along with me. Amen. Let me pray this prayer. Sundan nyo lang ako. Alright. Lord Jesus, thank you for this opportunity. For me, to surrender my life to you. Lord Jesus, I'm sorry for the many times I have run away from you. I'm sorry, Lord Jesus, for the times that I chose my own purpose, my own will. But Lord, as I understand your love for me, starting today, Lord Jesus, I receive you as my personal Lord and Savior. Starting today, may my life be yours and yours alone. Starting today, have your way in my life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen and amen. Can we give God praise, church? You can all return to your seats. You know what? This, this, this opportunity is always made available to all of us. These men and women have surrendered their lives. And it could be you sitting or standing there right now, probably not yet ready to make that bold step of faith. But I believe this is the year of your breakthrough in the Lord. Amen. I hope, church, that 
all throughout this 2024, we will give glory to God. The glory that He deserves. The praises and the adoration that He deserves for this year. Amen. I hope that this year we will be filled with the fullness of God as we worship Him all the days of our lives. Amen. In fact, today at this moment, why don't we worship God? Amen. Let's worship God today. There is no power greater, exceeding, abundant, beyond what we could ask or think. We call on your name. Let's sing it again, church. We need a miracle. You are the miracle maker. God of the impossible. There is no power greater. Abundant beyond what we could ask or think, we call on your name, Jesus. Let's declare this church. In the waiting, you get the glory. Come on, let's sing it. In the healing, you get the glory. In the breaking, you get the glory. In the breakthrough, you get the glory. In the waiting, you get the glory. Church, who among you are in need of a miracle in 2024? Amen, amen. You know, my hope, my faith is that yes, God is going to give that miracle today. And even in this year, that God is going to give that miracle to you. But ultimately, I hope that that miracle will bring glory to God. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In fact, I want to pray this for all of us as we close our service. And as I pray this for all of us. 
The same verse, Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. It says, Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all that we can ask or think, according to the power at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Lord, bless your people in 2024, Lord. Lord, in all things, God, we will bring glory to your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Church, Happy New Year to all of us. If you need prayers, please approach us here in front. God bless all of us.